Welcome to the 10 day trend that takes us into summer. Yes, meteorologically and climatologically, summer starts on the 1st of June on Saturday. And this year it could well coincide with some summer like weather. We are expecting temperatures to rise and for many of us, we'll see some sunshine on Saturday. Now it is gonna be warming up pretty much across all parts for the rest of this week. It will be turning sunnier for many, but not everywhere is going to see blue skies, and particularly in parts of the north and the west, there will be further outbreaks of rain over the next couple of days. And then the big question, how long is the warmer weather going to last? And the short answer is not very, because for next week, we're back to low pressure. We're back to much cooler conditions and we're back to plenty of showers. The really interesting question meteorologically is how are we going to change from one to the other? And what's the weather going to be like as we see that transition during the weekend? More on that in a moment. Let's get into the detail of how warm we're going to see things over the next few days, because this is the setup, big area of low pressure out in the Atlantic, and it's in here where things are warming up. This is called a warm sector, quite a broad warm sector, and it's in here behind this warm front that the warmer air is pushing its way up across the country. But notice there are weather fronts just dancing and dribbling their way across parts of northern Britain, and they will always bring cloud and some outbreaks of rain. So as I said at the start, it's not turning hot and sunny everywhere. On Friday, the warmth really confined to central and eastern parts of England. And let's run through Thursday and Friday really quickly, because this shows you the contrast. Bands of cloud and rain coming into Scotland and Northern Ireland, whereas for much of England and Wales, it's dry and a big temperature contrast on Friday. If we see some sunshine across the southeast, easily into the low 20s, whereas it stays cool across the northwest, only 12 or 13 here with some outbreaks of rain. Now, Saturday is the day where we'll see the most widespread heat, if you like. But again, it is mostly across England and Wales, still across Scotland and Northern Ireland. Temperatures, yes, are rising, but nothing spectacular here. Maybe 18, 19 in the northeast of Scotland. But for the bulk of England and Wales, Saturday, widespread, warmer weather. We could get up to 28 or 29 across parts of the southeast. The coasts will be cooler and the coasts may stay a bit misty and murky, but inland we're looking at 24, 25 degrees Celsius. So we uh, like to see the warmest day of the year so far, probably on Friday and maybe again on Saturday. Big question is, as I said, how long is that going to last? And well, Sunday may well be the day when we start to see a change. This graphic here shows how widespread the warmth is likely to be. This is Saturday's chart. This isn't the temperatures. This is the temperatures compared to average. And you can see there red colours for most of England and Wales. We are well above average here, not so much for Scotland and Northern Ireland. Compare that to Friday, where just a few places a little bit above average on Friday. That's the day we'll start to see the warmth depending on the sunshine. Widespread warmth across England and Wales on Saturday. How long does it last? Well, it looks as if things are turning cooler on Sunday, but there's a lot of uncertainty about the timing of things turning colder. But you can imagine from these graphs, actually, we've got a cold front swinging across the country, and that's what we are expecting. On Sunday, a cold front swings through and introduces cooler air. But there is much uncertainty about the position, the timing, and indeed the intensity of this cold front. It could be bringing some thunderstorms as it moves across the country. So as I said, some uncertainty. Let's rewind the clock and show you why there's a bit of uncertainty and trace this area of low pressure going back in time all the way to the eastern seaboard of the United States. As I speak, it's forming out across the eastern seaboard and there's a lot of activity in the US at the moment. Again, another day with severe thunderstorms across the US and potential tornadoes breaking out. And that kind of severe weather can then impact on things high up in the atmosphere. This is the jet stream coming out of the United States. And uh, as I say, things really could develop over the next couple of days with that area of low pressure, depending on the intensity, depending on the number of thunderstorms we see in the US, how that then interacts with the jet stream. You can almost see the jet almost kind of splitting there with two arms to it. So it gets very complicated through Thursday. And then the next few days, the jet tends to drive south. And it's this little trough, which then develops the low pressure, which becomes the cold front that swings across the country on Sunday. It's pretty complicated. And that's why I'm showing you this, just to show you there's a lot going to happen in the next few days 
high up in the atmosphere, thousands of miles away across the Atlantic, that will determine the position of this cold front on Sunday. What does that mean? Well, it means that Sunday is the day we're likely to see the change. We are likely to see some thunderstorms triggered by the heat and humidity, but there's big question marks about exactly where and when. So stay tuned for updates because Sunday could be a very lively day. It may be one more hot day across the east. It just depends on the timing of that cold front swinging through. Beyond Sunday, well, actually, the weather becomes a little bit more straightforward. It's one of those slightly counterintuitive scenarios where there's a lot of uncertainty about Sunday. But beyond Sunday, we're reasonably confident in the forecast because the jet stream becomes, well, not standard, but back to a more typical scenario coming out of the Atlantic and taking low pressure systems just to the north. So the most likely scenario for the early part of next week is that low pressure will dominate to the northwest. And of course, with the jet slipping back further south, we will chiefly be on the cold side of the jet. So for the first half of next week, certainly it looks as if it will be on the cool side and we'll see showers or longer spells of rain. And so this graph shows that quite nicely. Two graphs here. The one on the top is for Reading and the one uh, for the down to the bottom there is Edinburgh. Now, I just really want you to focus on the red blobs. That's the most likely maximum temperatures as we go through the next few days and into next week, the dates there along the bottom. This red line is the average temperature for the time of year and the red nodules suggesting the temperature spread for the next few days. So we can see here for Reading, the temperatures are expected to rise, probably peaking on Sunday before we see a drop in temperatures. And for much of next week, temperatures are expected to be below or at or below average. And the same goes for Edinburgh. You can see that trend here, the rising and the dropping of those temperatures. So the scenario is warmer weather, yes, for the next few days, peaking probably on Saturday and then turning cooler next week with showers. May turn a bit warmer and a bit drier towards the back end of next week. But I think you'll agree there's plenty to get through before we get there. The best thing for you to do is to stay tuned to the updates down with the Met Office app or follow us on social media to see just how hot you could get on Saturday and to see if there will be some big thunderstorms around on Sunday. Thanks for watching.